Okay, this is quiz number one of Perform Computations called Charts and Tables. Uh, so basically we, we're reading charts and trying to get the information out of the chart that we're being required for. So we have some information down the bottom here, blah, 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 and we're using the table, which is this chart here, to uh, get that information. All right, so um, let's just see what this says down here. A milling cutter has 12 teeth. That's exciting. Just not there, yeah, not there. So it's got 12 teeth, and what else about it? The diameter of the cutter, that's a bit big. Let's see, two. Right, the diameter of the cutter is 86 millimeters, and the cutting, the correct cutting speed is 173. No, I'm so we're going 173 meters per minute. That's the cutting speed. Now, what's cutting speed mean? Well, this milling cutter has got 12 teeth, but um, we don't care how many teeth. So this is my cutter. Good picture, right? And here's your job. So you're you're cutting away and you're chopping out on the job. Say, so this is our cutting. <clears throat> so uh, so it means being that way. So the cutting speed, right, is how fast the tip of the tool is going, how fast it's actually going on the tip. That's cutting speed. That's an important number. But the thing is, it depends on what's the diameter of your cutter. So if you've got a big diameter cutter, then you've got to go slower RPM for the same cutting speed. So the RPM and the cutting speed are related by the diameter of the cutter. It's got nothing to do with the number 12, 12 teeth. In fact, 12 teeth is not even on the chart. That's just to throw you. All right, so we want 86 diameter, cutting speed 173. You want to know the RPM. So 86 diameter, so it's my diameter here is 86. And the cutting speed I'm after is 173. So in the blue chart along here, 173. So they're the two numbers that I'm given and the number that I'm trying to read off here is the RPM. So this is one here. There's three things happening on this chart. Diameter, cutting speed and RPM. And we're trying to get a relationship between those three. So we need to pick up 86 in diameter. That's the first thing to begin with. So um, let's do an 86 diameter. So when we look in here, 86 is between um, 90 and 100, so we start there, so it's along there somewhere. And the other number that we have is the cutting speed of 173. So 170, there's 150, there's 200, so 173 is going to be right in between those two. Now these are logarithmic scales, you notice these are getting up faster and faster as you go. So the 173 won't be in the middle, be a little bit closer to the 150. And so something like that. Right. So when we read those two, we find a connection point, which is just here, and we take that connection point up to the top, and that'll give us our RPM. So that connects it up there, which takes us up to the top. And then the speed looks like it's uh, 600, so six, maybe 640 or so, 640 RPM. So we're halfway between um, our 600 and our 700. So it looks like about 640. Now, of course, uh, you can't expect to get, you know, 10 decimal places accuracy when you're reading the chart. So that's why we say uh, accuracy only within 10%, not like that. When you're reading a chart, but if we get 640 RPM, that's a tick. 630 would probably work as well, and 650. <clears throat> you're just um, ballparking it, and the machine's not going to care anyway if you're out by uh, 10 RPM. Right, the next question is the same sort of thing. This time it's a lathe, and uh, the diameter is 8 mils. So there's a diameter, 8. So this is the diameter here, that'll be 8 millimeters. And the correct cutting speed that we're supposed to be going is 92 
meters per minute. So just checking that that's meters per minute as well. Yes, so we're up to the 92 here. Okay, so fairly similar to the previous question. 92 would be about just short of halfway on this one. Like so. 8 millimeters is way up here. There's the actual 8. There's the line. You can see the line for 8 there. That gives us intersection point right there, which is uh, probably about 3,500 for question 2. Notice the rest per minute is pretty high. Um, the reason it's so high is because the diameter is so small. It's a tiny, yeah, we got that right. So it's a tiny little piece. It's only 8 mil diameter. So we've got to go really fast to get up to only 92 meters per minute. We've got another one here. A drill of diameter 8. So we, the drill is the same diameter as last time. So drill down to 8, and uh, it's set at 8.16, so it's not cutting speed. We're going to try and find out what the cutting speed will be. So this we don't know. And it's the, uh, so we asked me the other way, but we're doing 8.16 RPMs. So the RPM up here is 8.16. Okay, 8 millimeters, we already have that one. 16, which is uh, eight, just slightly over the 800 there. Take this to that intersection point. Bring this one down. To about there. So it's uh, 20, maybe 21 meters per minute. Well, we've got three right in a row, in that moment. We just thought. All right, now the next question is uh, converting. So we've done that one now, now. Converting inches to millimeters. Now, we can do that pretty easily. We just multiply by 25.4, you know. So you just grab your calculator and go, hmm, you want to convert inches to millimeters? So, uh, if you can draw lines, let's get this up here. Get my Photoshop organized. All right. Um, yeah, inches to millimeters. So one inch equals 25.4 millimeters. Very handy conversion. But we also could do it by table, which is what this is doing. Um, don't ask me why. You've always got your phone and calculator handy. Convert point. 265 inches into millimeters. Converting this inches into millimeters, not 0.267. I'll say 265. 267, 0.26. Now we don't have a 0.267 on here, but what we can do is we can make one. 0.26. There it is. There. So, so that's 0.26 in that row, and then the next digit is a seven, which is this one. So we need to combine that row and that row, so it's this figure here. All right, so 0 0.26, and then the next digit is 007, which is this one here. So 'cause we've got to check that with the twenty five point four. All right, now we're converting to inches here, so from millimeters to inches. Um, now once again this has got small decimal places and then full millimeters. So if we want to um, get an accurate number we'll have to uh, join them together. Which is a whole lot harder than um, 
this is multiplied by 25.4, but anyway. Uh, in fact, let's just do it uh, on the calculator first, just so we know we're getting that right answer. So it's 14.1 millimeters converting to inches. So to do that, we get 14.1 divided by 25.4. Get our calculator. So it's a bit of a weak excuse for using a chart, to be quite honest. Okay, 14.1 divided by 10. Okay, 0.555118. That's that for accuracy. 555118. How much accuracy are we doing here? Accuracy? Do we need here? We're supposed to do this with 1%. 1% is around about three significant figures. That would give you 1%. It should be within 1% there. So three significant figures is starting at the 5 there. 1, 2, 3, 7. You only really need to go 0 0.555. You don't need the other three. But I would probably work with maybe five signaling figures just to be on the safe side. How do I do it with this chart? Well, 14 millimeters is right there. That's exactly 14 millimeters. So we've got to get that number. And then we have to add 0 0.1, which is there. So we've got to add those two numbers together. Yeah, I can I can see you're imagining that it would be much easier just to multiply 25.4. So we have to go 0 0.5511 plus 0 0.0039. Exactly the same number. Isn't that cool? Yeah, uh, I think 25.4 is a lot easier. 0.555 would be adequate. Bit of a sad excuse for a chart, if you ask me. Not that I should say that, I should say. What a fantastic answer. All right. Especially when it's a recording. Oh dear, get in trouble. Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now this table uh, confuses everyone including me, um, what does it actually stand for? <clears throat> well, it's a bit unusual, which is good. We'll see an unusual table here. Okay, Can't get freaked out. We're, um, let's see what we're trying to do. We're going to go uh, four, 487 Celsius to Fahrenheit, which is the American system, which is really weird. Celsius is also known as centigrade, so we have two different names, but the proper name is supposed to be Celsius. 487 Celsius, which is pretty hot. So we just look for a Celsius degree in the Celsius column starting at minus 73 and uh, go to Fahrenheit and go to. So what's what's all this mean? Celsius, Celsius, Fahrenheit, Celsius, Fahrenheit. So if I have minus 73 Celsius, it's minus 100 Fahrenheit. But if I have minus 100 Celsius, that's minus 148 Fahrenheit. Don't know why that did that. Just to make it confusing, I guess. So just use the first two rows. All right, so we are looking at uh, one, four, 487, 487, which is right. Hmm. Yeah, 488, 48, yeah, that's pretty good. 488 degrees. Celsius is how much in Fahrenheit? 910. So it would be 910, except it's not 488, it's a bit less. So it's probably more like. This. Something like that. so it's only five percent accuracy, but it's probably more accurate would be about 908. Just so take one degree off in Celsius, maybe about two degrees or one and a half degrees off in Fahrenheit. Let's try 908. We only need five percent accuracy anyway. Yes, we're another one right. That's good. Notice how I keep bragging about getting them right. 
This uh, next question is the first of a series of questions using the FITS chart. That is uh, accuracy of a hole and a shaft and how tight they have to fit. So uh, it's all about reading the chart, making sure we can understand the numbers. The chart is in microns, right? So this is the first thing is that all these all these numbers that you see in the chart here, they're all microns. So um, that's what says to nearest micron. So a micron is a micrometer, which is one thousandth of a millimeter. Thousandth of a millimeter. And it pretty much represents about the limit of accuracy of machining. Uh, you can't normally do much better than that. And most machine readouts and stuff would be limited to about a micron. Submicron is getting really serious. That would be unusual work, and you'd even have to have temperature controls and stuff um, to machine to that sort of accuracy. So, what's the minimum size? Now we're looking at a H7, H sorry, H8F7. All right. Now, when you read these things, the capital letter stands for the hole. So the hole is fit or accuracy of the hole is H8, and the shaft is an F7. Right now the letter is how tight it is and the number is how accurate it is. So a smaller number is harder to make and the letters um, get more and more tight as they move along. So if we start, I'm just going to follow through the chart. See these low letters here, they're just the C's. See, see these charts here. C's, they're very, very loose. So they're so loose that they're very like We don't care about this. And then as we're getting more and more and more accurate, or more and more tight, we should say, these letters are going up. But you'll also notice that the fit, which is the 11, is going down to 10, going down to 9. So as you're getting a closer fit, you have to also be more accurate. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You might accidentally make it too tight, uh, which is not the idea. The idea is for it to be a running fit. The one we're after is H, H8 F7. So, uh, sorry, H, let me read that again. What are we after? H8 F7 was right. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. H8, so there's H8 here. It's H8, and the column next to it is F7. Right, so this is the column that we're after, this one here. So it's in this column somewhere. Now the next thing we need to read is what's the size of the hole of the of the um, of the fitting or the shaft. The nominal size is 45 and a half mil. So we're going to be looking in the row where 45 and a half fits. So it's it's this row here, which is between. 40 and 50. All right, so uh, this splits up, so it's it's this row here. After this bunch here. So the whole point of the whole chart is just to find this little box. Once we've got this box, we've got all of our numbers. And uh, what it means is that the hole, the F, which is the hole, is from minus 25 microns to minus 50 microns of 45.5. And the shaft is, oh, sorry, I just got that wrong. This is the hole, and this is the shaft. So the, um, hole is 39 microns over, the shaft is 25 to 50 microns under the size. That's how I read it. That's it. Once you know that, you can use that information all the way through the rest of your question. In fact, we can just steal this here. 39 over, 25 to 50 under. So the hole is plus 25 up to plus 50, and the shaft is on size to minus 39 
markers and the source. Okay. Let's just double check that. 39, yeah. Okay, so once we've got the information, we can then copy that uh, for the rest of the questions, I think. All right, what is the minimum size of the hole, right? So the hole is this one. The smallest hole will be, take away, uh, adding um, 25. The minimum size of the smallest hole adds 25. So it's 45.5 plus 25 microns. So that's the number. Five. Now the next question will be uh, continuation, I think. Yeah, oh, we've got 46.3, but that's still in the same range. Just watch out that it's a different number, 46.3. Uh, this time we're doing the maximum size of the hole. But it's uh, because it's still 46.3, it's still in that same range. Is the um, 40 to 50, which is this one. <clears throat> so we still have the same whole shaft tolerances from here. Hole is H8, shaft is F7. So we'll rewrite those in the hole, which is H8, the shaft, which is F7. And the hole is plus 25 up to plus 50, and the shaft is naught down to minus 39. Those are all microns. Maximum size of the hole, the biggest hole you can get, will be 46.3 plus 50 microns, 0.050. That's 50 microns. So the biggest hole you can get is 46.35. If you go bigger than that, it's out of spec. Your parts are wrong. It's not an H8F7 anymore. So the number we are after is 46.35. Yeah, what did I do? Wrong? Maximum size of the hole. Maximum size of the hole. 46.3. No. No. I get shot in my next step. No. The hole is oh down there. I got shot in my next step. Goodness me. Hole. It's not like that. No. Shaft. Is minus. Oh, I'm done. It's rubbish. <clears throat> this is all nonsense here. Let me stop. No wonder when you're reading a sideways chart, what do you expect? Shaft is minus 25 to minus 50. So that's this one here. Minus 25. Minus 50, and this is whole plus nothing to plus 39. Whole is here yeah, to plus 39. Notice the shaft is under and the hole is over, so we have a loose fit. So that's what I should have written here. So the shaft is minus 25 to minus 50, and the hole is plus nothing to plus 39. So that should have been 39. So the hole, the biggest hole, maximum size of the hole, will be add 39, which would be uh, 46.3 add 39 is 339. Mm -hmm. 
And what's the maximum size of the shaft? Which is the obvious next question. You probably memorized it by now. H8, F7. Hole is plus 39. Shaft is minus 25 to minus 50. Now 48.5 maximum shaft is this one. So the shaft's not allowed to be si on size, not allowed to be 48.6, that's too big. It's got to be undersized by And the last in that series, obviously, will be what's the minimum size of the shaft. <clears throat> and this is a 30.9. 30.9 is in still in the same range because the 30 40 uh, comes together here. So we're still at exactly the same. H8, F7. <clears throat> that we had uh, previously up here. So the hole is. Positive 39, and the shaft is negative 25 to negative 50. The minimum shaft size would be subtracting 50, so we have 30.9 minus 50 microns, and that's 85, which is 30.85. Enough of them. Next question is a fairly simple chart reading question. So we're just reading off the chart, getting a number from it. 5% accuracy, so, so there's a limit to how accurate we can draw anyway. Uh, what is the mass in grams? So we're trying to find the gram, so this is the one we're looking for, and the diameter is 8. So we just take it 8 mil and take it up to the place where it intersects, which is just here, so it's slightly over 2. So let's say that's at least 2.1, maybe even 2.2, let's say 2.2 grams. So of course you can't do you know three decimal places of accuracy for the same chart. That's the idea of a chart, you just give a approximate number. <clears throat> Good. And we have one wrong so far, which is uh, We've got the mix up and this time of course we're going down the other way what's the diameter this time so we're trying to find diameter and the mass is two so we start with a two gram mass which is this line here which hits right there it takes us down to about there the diameter will be about 7.8 millimeters five percent accuracy means you don't need to be that fantastic Point eight millimeters. Yep. All right. Next question. Uh, what is the removal rate for a five kilowatt machine cutting hard steel? So we're gonna gotta get the uh, let's get the, that um, material first. So medium hard steel. Where's that? So looking through here, steel medium. So this is the hardness. These are hardness readings. Those those numbers there. It's actually a Brunel hardness which is a, a ball indenter, indents into the material, and see how hard it is by how deep the indent, how deep the indent goes. So uh, medium hard is this one here, so we're in this column, somewhere, somewhere in this column. Right, and what are these, this work material and approximate maximum hardness. So there's your hardness. This is your kilowatts over here. 
All right, that's your power. That's the power of the machine. So it takes more power when you hit you when you're trying to cut a uh, harder material uh, at a certain rate. <clears throat> all right, so we're trying to work out what is our rate. That's the question, and the rates are all these quick numbers in the middle. Maximum rate of metal removal in cubic centimeters per minute. Yep, same units. And at five kilowatt machine. So look for the machine's kilowatts. That's the five there. So it's along this column and that way. So that gives us this number here. That's it. So it's 80, 88 cubic centimeters per minute. Good. Next question. Um, all right, so we have a couple of charts here. Um, this is uh, drill tapping sizes. So uh, when you tap a hole, most of you will be aware that a, uh, let's say we wanted to have an M12 tapped hole. If you drill out a 12 millimeter drill hole, we can't tap it because it's too big. That's the outside diameter of the thread. So you, the last thing you want to do is drill a 12 millimeter hole because you can't tap it. So what you have to do is drill it undersize so that when you come along and tap it, you can put that pitch, the, the thread into the material so that the outside diameter of that is approaching 12, slightly under 12, but it still gives you a, an M12 hole here. M12 metric drill. All right, so you this is your pre-drill size. We'll drill um, pre-drill or tapping drill. Tap is thread. Tap drill size. All right, tapping drill size. Let's put the numbers there. Right now, sometimes um, an imperial size is more convenient than uh, a metric size. So we have a mixture sometimes of millimeters or inches, um, which drill you want to use. What is the tapping drill size for an ISO fine? So it's fine metric ra uh, of radius seven. Okay, radius seven. That's an unusual way to say a bolt, isn't it? So uh, obviously, radius seven means diameter fourteen. I know why I do radius 7 because that's a random number there. And if I double it, I will have a standard metric thread. But if I have like 13, it's not standard. So there you go. That's why. Radius 7, which means 14 diameter. So there's a 14 right there. And if we're trying to um, do a 14 mil, then I will find an alternative side. So um, metric is this course, so that's no good. Can't use this one. Fine, yeah. Fine threads, 14 mil. That's this one here. And we can do a 12.5, or we can do a half inch, or we can do a 12.5. By the way, half inch is 4.7, so the half inch will be a little bit looser. It won't be as hard to get through. So if you're using stainless, maybe half inch might be better. Now, um, 12.5. That's the drill size. So you're drilling 12.5 millimeter, and then tapping it out to an M14. Good, another one. Now this next diagram, uh, which comes out of the book, I had to add a little bit more to it just to make it a bit more friendly uh, on the computer, and uh, because it was a bit hard to select things. So I've numbered everything. We've got three levers. We've got lever one, which has two positions, coarse and fine. Right, coarse thread and fine thread. Also got lever um, Three, which is a gearbox, um, which is A, B, and C, which gives you uh, a big range of gear choices. And then lever two is your main uh, gear choices on the front of the lathe. So 
this gives you each of the threads within that range on level three. So what would tend to happen is you kind of pick the rough range on three and um, refine it on two. <clears throat> or you look at the chart, it'll tell you which combination of levers do you need for a particular thread and feed. So uh, that's that. I'm just going to change colors when I get mixed up. The other thing is it says there's pitches and feeds. Now a pitch is a thread, so you're, you're cutting a thread there. But what's a feed? Feed is just when you're doing turning. You just want a smooth surface. But of course it's not absolutely smooth. It's a very, very, very fine thread. But your cutting tool is a bit rounded anyway, so it rounds off and you can't see the thread. But you can sort of feel it. You run your finger on it and you'll feel this very fine thread. Uh, but we don't call it a thread because it's just turning. So what does that mean? It means that the bold numbers, so these are in bold, are the threads. And the non-bold are the feeds. All right, question is, what will be the pitch? Now, if we use the word pitch, obviously we must be talking about threads. And if it's a thread, then it will be bold. Okay, so we're looking for well, what is the bold number when the, the levers are 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, and 3.2. 1.1. Right. So we've got their choice of, of lever 1, 1.1, and 1.2. We're at 1.1, so we're down here somewhere. That's the first thing. 2.3. All right, so lever 2 is in position 3. So we're in this column here, 2.3. So we're in this box now, second row, third, one lever three, and the last lever is lever three is in position two. So lever three, position two, which is this one here. So that's the numbers right there. And if you're using the feed, you'll get 0.14. And if you're using the pitch, you'll get 0.5. And the question is asking for the pitch, which is 0.5. All right, Fred, that was something fairly small. Or it might be a microscope or something with a very fine thread on the big one. And uh, 1.2, 2.3, 3.2. What's the feed now? Feed. Remember, I said there's pitch and feed. Feed will be when, um, oh, hang on, are they the same numbers? 1.2, 2.3, 2.2. Oh, same numbers, good. Well, we know exactly where we were. We were in 2.3. We're, we're looking at these numbers here, same ones. So the feed is 0.14 now. Okay, so that's the So that means you turn on the other lever, the carriage will be going along at 0 0.14. 1.2, 2.3. 1.2, oh, get lost. I didn't read it carefully enough. 1.2. One point one. They're not the same. <sighs> Completely different numbers. Okay. Well, that was a mistake. It's one point two. It's this one up here. No, no, certainly right for trying to rush. And the second lever is two point three, same as before. So we know we're in this box here. And 3.2 we're on this row so it's these ones so the feed was 0.7 the answer there was supposed to be 0.7 which is a pretty rough feed right now um, there's a bunch of questions here to be answered um, see how we go Cutting speed for magnesium alloy. So match the material with the cutting speed. So we have a choice here of which one we're using. So let's um, 
Cutting speed for magnesium alloy. So we've got a bunch of numbers here. And we're going to find out which one they are up here. So cutting speed is the last column here. Magnesium alloys here. So 122 to 460. 120 is the one there. Cutting speed for brass. So there's brass 36 to 36 to 76 meters per minute. Feed for steel, which is 300 to 400. So steel 300 to 400. That's this one here. And a feed. With a plain helical cutter, so plain helical. This is feed per two, plain helical. So it's 0.13. And feed for soft cast iron with a saw. So here we're sawing, and cast iron soft. That's 0.1. 0.1. Yep, that seems to match. So check that one. Good. Couldn't really do that one then. Photoshop. And a similar question that once again looking at a table, so we'll do that in the quiz as well. Okay, soaring. This is um similar to the previous chart, only this is high speed steel. And this chart is for cemented carbide, so they're harder cut. Steel 350 to 450, so that's uh, this one down here, pretty hard. <coughs> and we're sawing, so we're looking at the sawing, this is the second half column, so it's speeds and feeds there. So, so your speed is your um, meters per minute and your feed is your millimeters per revolution or per two. Match the cutting speed and feed. So steel 350 and second last one is this one here. We're looking for these numbers. So that's that one. 35, 30 to 45. Yeah. Aluminium form milling. So we're milling the very last one with aluminium, so it's this one up here, 0.2 to 0.38, and 610. Now, what's that little 610 arrow mean? Just means you go 610 or faster, so that's your cutting speed. Um, so you could even go quicker than that. Cast iron 180 to 225. And we are face milling. So face mill is the first one, cast iron, this one here. Um, 180. That's this one. Yeah, that's the one. And brass end milling, very last one. End mill is the third column, brass is there, so 152, 457. Um, that one. Alrighty. Getting close now. We have this uh, question here. Now this is surface finish, and that symbol uh, represents uh, how smooth the surface is, basically. And there's a number there which is in microns. Uh, there's microns of roughness, which is a little bit hard to measure because if you go in a microscope, you know the surface is you know, just like a mountainous terrain like this. And so the microns is is a statistical average um, variation in in the uh, height of that job. So if that was 25 microns, then it's not actually the very lowest to the very highest, it's kind of statistical, but anyway. Um, so we have um, rough figures that they don't, you don't, you know, come up with um, 
13.26. You just use these rough numbers because uh, it's statistical anyway. So they tend to kind of half them each time as they get more, more and more um, at higher and higher surface finish. So very rough is 20, 25 microns, which is kind of like if you just came straight up sand casting. So it's pretty bad. And 12 microns is um, bad machining, 6 microns, so 6.3. Um, it's fairly standard kind of machining. Uh, 3.2, okay, now we're starting to get pretty pretty nice, looking pretty good. And 1.6 is getting serious, okay, this is, this is not, okay, this is an important surface that we're going to be, uh, you know, things mounting on, or it might be mounting bearings or something. 0.8 is, okay, now this is probably a running surface, like in the bearing, in the bearing or something. And 0.4 is like about as good as you're going to get. All right, so we're basically just matching uh, which one we should have for each type of application. So we're, we're looking for the names in here. A typical good machine finish. Okay, so you just look down here if you find a typical good machine, machine finish. And find where they are. Only really possible are grown in honing, honing and lapping sea so um, that would be the, the best one of all to say I'm not trying to be very very accurate or very very smooth. The outside surface cast iron sand casting that's the pathetic one so that would be right up to 25 microns. Best quality finish on a lathe okay so probably yeah close times about a point eight Lace, lace can give you a very good finish, so um, they can get down. Very coarse surface grinding. Surface grinders um, do give you good accuracy, but uh, if you're just doing rough surface grinding, um, you're probably going to be around the 3.2, I would think. Grinding on the here can be very coarse surface, surface grinding. I'm guessing that should be around the. Don't see the word surface anywhere. You could just look for surface grinding. We just said a 3.2, but it looks like it's going to be rough than that. Very coarse surface grinding. What was, what was the question? Oh, very coarse surface grinding. Duh. So that was uh, 3. 6.3. Lowest quality finish for making surfaces of a shrink fit. So this is the worst you're allowed to go for a shrink fit. So it should be the first time you see shrink fits. There's a shrink fit there. Of course, you can do a shrink fit with a 0.4 if you like. That's fine. You should not pay for it. <clears throat> but uh, if you're going to do a shrink fit, that means your tolerances are going to be pretty good. If your tolerances are good, then your surface finish has to be good as well. So as you get more and more, at higher and higher tolerances, you tend to have better and better surface finish. So it's like a frequent too. And this is the first question. A typical good machine finish. Mm, well, definitely better than 12.5. That's not good machine finish. Very coarse surface, 6.3. Um, good machine finish might be a 1.6 or a good Probably 1.6. No 1.6 yet? No, we haven't. There we go. Let's get up. A little bit of interpretation going on there when you do that question. Yep. Uh, most of them are there, but you've got to kind of work it out on, on some of them. Very last question now. <clears throat> Uh, this is workpiece thickness and hacksaw. Uh, the hacksaw accuracy is in um, TPI, teeth per inch. So a rough hacksaw has less teeth. So this might be 10 TPI and a hacksaw with finer teeth might be 20 TPI. Right, this is for harder materials, this is for softer. Also, if it's thinner, so you have smaller teeth because it's hard. And you also have smaller teeth because it's thin. And you have big teeth because it's soft. And you have big teeth because it's thick. Two reasons. Right.
which of these statements about um, hacksaw blades is true? Higher TPI blades have larger teeth. Yes, that is wrong. That is not true. Higher number of threads per inch means they're smaller teeth. That ain't it. Finer teeth are used for thinner material. Yes, that's true. Um, 24 TPI can, can do the widest variety of cutting jobs. All right, there's a 24 there. There's a 24 there, and there's a 24 there. There's a few 24s going on. Yeah, that's probably right. It can do all the different types of materials, and it can go all the way from um, material that's about 4 millimeters thick up to whatever you like. Yeah, so that would be true. Like if you use 32 teeth per inch, you can only do these little tiny jobs. So yep, yeah, that would be true. TPI means teeth per inch, no, that's it true. Lower TPI blades are used for harder materials. No, 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 that's the low. This is low. Low TPI, high TPI. So lower TPI, no, they're not. That's wrong. So this, those three questions in the middle are correct. Good. Well, that's it. That's the end of quiz number one.